what we're going to do is go over some basic rigging stuff. Um, and I do want to stress basic. So today I'm just going to essentially show you how to put on the bones, um, skin it to the character, which is how you get it to um, deform the actual mesh. And then if we get that far, we'll, we'll um, probably at least dip our toes into painting weights. So like I said before, sometimes you see this file contains mental ray nodes. That's okay, it doesn't really hurt anything. Like I also said, you might see this sometimes. Errors have occurred. If the f scene looks okay, it's probably fine. So this is our character for today. And this character was modeled with rigging in mind. Um, which mostly has to do with the pose. I'm not quite sure why the um, left arm and right arm are at slightly different angles. So, um, I, the modeler probably had a really good reason for that, but I don't really know what it was. So it doesn't really affect what we do in, a, in any great deal, but um, it's an interesting choice and I wonder why they chose that. So I'm going to just get rid of some of these extraneous things, like these planes. Um, you can actually even get rid of the lights in the camera if you want, for now. Uh, the 3D texture placement nodes are uh, probably... probably uh, placing various textures on this character, which we don't really need for this, but I'm just going to leave them in there. So um, did everybody get this scene open, and are you looking at this girl here in Maya? Oh, that, oops, that link went just to Carter Cole. I, it switched to Carter Cole. I don't know why. Instead of to everyone. Okay, there's the link. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, boy. No snow days when it's online. <laughs> My mother-in-law is visiting today. She got stuck. She got five feet out of the driveway and got stuck. <laughs> uh, this character comes in a few different meshes. Um, so like you've got hair, you've got the overalls, um, you've got the character skin, and there's also a shirt with that. And the shoes and stuff. Looks like there's a couple of ribbons on the shoes also. Um, and that, uh, whether your character is one continuous mesh or multiple pieces like this is not really going to matter, um, except in as much as the, um, the components, if they get too, too complex, then it could slow your computer down. As always, you should be used to that by now. Um, so what I'm going to do is, it's going to be kind of hard to set bones on this character to make the rig with it opaque like this, and if you if you switch it to wireframe view, it also is kind of busy. I mean, you can see inside it now, but it's still pretty busy. So um, that's why some of these different views are here. So if I go to the shading tab on the perspective view, I'm going to do a wireframe on shaded, and then I'm going to have an x-ray joints. And the x-ray joints isn't going to show anything yet until we put a, a bone in. That, that will show through the um, through the character mesh. So um, this outliner, I'm probably going to need. So we're going to keep that open. Render view, I do not need right now. And I'm going to go to my four panel view, and I should have 
wireframe view on each of those. So so I'm going to frame that in the view by selecting everything and choosing Shift F. So um, the joint tool is right here under your rigging tab on the shelf. This is the basic joint tool. This is the inverse kinematic joint tool, and then this is the skin tool. So, and you also will find those on the rigging menu set under skeleton, create joints, and skin, bind skin. Um, when we create these bones, they will, in, uh, in the case of characters or living things, they will mimic the actual bones of a person. They're not exactly the same thing, so you don't have to, I, I don't know even how many bones are in the human body, but you don't have to make all 400 odd bone, whatever it is, when you make a rig. You don't need to do that. So, um, what we do need to do, though, is have just a basic understanding of human anatomy and how the body moves. So when you're creating your bones, almost always the first bone um, goes in the pelvis. The first bone is the origin of all the movement in the body. Um, so in a person, it's going to be right in the pelvis, um, maybe just a little below the navel. Uh, that's 99% uh, of the time, that's where you're going to start your, um, your rig. So with our first joint, we just put it right there. And actually, I'm going to undo that because that's not going to be exactly in the middle. I'm going to put that, got to learn how to use your orthographic views if you haven't already. I put that in the set, uh, side view so that it's precisely centered. Okay, and then we'll come down to the, do most of the rest of this in the front view. Come down to the, her right hip, our left, and then it'll draw a bone between those two joints. So every joint you put in, it makes the bone between them, and that's done through the parenting relationship. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So let's make one more bone at the knee. So this is kind of like the femur here. And then one more bone at the ankle. And then I'm going to go back to the side view. And you can see we're going to need to move a few of these in the side view a little bit. That's pretty normal. I'm going to do one more bone at the heel, and then one last bone a little past the toe so that it goes right up to the shoe, the edge of the shoe. And you'll have kind of a leg going here. So that's about, that's about good. That's about what you want. And I will do a few movements on the individual joints here in the side view so that they're more in line with where the anatomy is. So I'm just kind of tweaking that just a little bit. So I've got the knee more centered on the knee and the ankle is more centered on the ankle. And everything lines up well. So um, this is kind of the start of our, our um, puppet rig here. Like I said, the bones kind of mimic the human bones. They're not the exact same thing, but um, these bones will deform the mesh when we skin it. The bones all have a parent relationship to all of the bones around it. The first one that you put down is the parent of everything, the origin of all movement. And I'm going to use my outliner to name that root. And you can also name that pelvis if you want. Root is kind of conveys the idea that it's the center of everything here. So, and then if we get, kind of go down the line here, um, we're going to call this one right hip. This one will be right knee. And this one will be right ankle. 
ankle, and then right heel, not held, heel, and then this one will be right toe. Now I am not going to make bones for every toe on this rig. You may have animation needs that require that level of articulation, but just follow the logical process that I'm showing you to continue on, you know, to f greater uh, greater levels of articulation as as needed. And I'm going to do the same thing with the fingers. I'm not going to I'm not going to bone every individual finger. So coming back from the leg, when we're going to start working our way up, you want to select the root joint again, whichever joint is going to be the parent. So the root joint case and I'm going to put go back to my joint tool here and you got to make sure that root joint is selected when you start with this tool so okay okay it was griefing me a little bit when I was doing this earlier too Seems like if it, it like wants me to hold the mouse down for a, I don't know. Come on, let me select it. There we go. If it comes down to it, you can always parent these manually too, because it's the parent relationship that creates these actual bones here. Uh, but with the root joint selected, we're going to just go upper spine here. And the spine will um, have a little bit of a curve to it. I'm just going to do about four bones for the spine. In some cases, you might want more. As you know, a real spine has a lot more bones than that. And you can have it curve a little bit, kind of like a back is arched like a spine is arched. Uh, and then I'm going to go, and these bones aren't real at all. These are just going to control the head. I'm going to go with one bone that goes about to the top of the head, and then one bone that goes somewhere about here, and then one more around the chin. for something along these lines. Everybody with me so far? This is a... Um, this is a simple process on this character. Uh, more complex characters can get a little more complex, obviously. Again, it just it always depends on the needs of your animation and your rig. Today we're just going to get her moving. So I want to go and um, well, let me let me name these joints before I move on. Uh, this one is going to be we're just going to call it spine one through four. Actually, it won't even be spine 1 through 4. It'll be spine 1, spine 2. And then I think this one... I'm trying to decide if I want the shoulders to come off this one or this one. I think the shoulders should come off the next one. So this will be spine 3. And this one will be the uh, throat or clavicle, whichever you prefer. And this one is not real. This is the top of the head. Top head joint or bit nose is what I meant. Chin. 
And so we're going to have the arms come off the clavicle to create the shoulders and the um, appendages. And that's going to happen in the front view here. So I'll turn that on and make sure I've got the clavicle selected with the joint tool on. And I'm going to put one bone in the shoulder here. Uh, to connect more bones to the root, um, select the root. I'll undo that so I can do it again. I'm doing it from the clavicle, but it would be the same from the root. Wherever you're coming from, uh, turn your bone tool on and then select uh, whichever bone you want to be, whichever joint you want to be the, the parent of what you're about to lay down. So for the root, you know, just click on the root and away you go. For the clavicle, I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to put the, the shoulder joint about there. And it, it has been kind of griefing me on making these selections a little bit, so it seems to be a little more, um, seems to behave a little better if I use the outliner. I was trying to do it earlier today with, visually, and it was, it was griefing me quite a bit. So. So you might want to use the outliner. And there's, okay, so shoulder, and then one in the elbow, one in the wrist, and then right down to the tip of the finger. her right shoulder. You really, really, this is one of the, this is one of the biggest opportunities to shoot yourselves in the foot um, by, by having bad naming habits. You really want to name these because it's going to be a nightmare for you later um, to try to work through these without naming it. Go away, I know I'm sharing that screen. Ugh. I don't like this program. Right shoulder, right elbow. And remember we're naming the joints, not the not the actual bones. Right wrist. Fingertip. So, um, with these bones, these bones are kind of big for if you were going to do each individual finger. So, um, if you, if your bones are too big or too small, you can change the size under your preferences. Hopefully I can find it quickly. I will try settings preferences under Windows settings preferences, and we'll go to preferences. And let's see here. Display kinematics joint size. Right there. So. If it's helpful for you to reduce or increase the joint size, that's where it is. Like I said, the default might be kind of a problem if we're trying to individually articulate each one of these fingers. They're gonna gonna be a big visual mess, so you would probably want to bring the size down a bit. I'm actually gonna just cancel that. are centered well. I think they're probably fine. I could move that one a little tiny bit. Okay. And 
remember, whenever you change a joint, everything after it gets affected. So with your parent-child relationships in mind, you want to be careful. I think we're good. So um, we're going to use our symmetry here and do just a mirroring of the joints. So I'm going to select the joints that will be mirrored, and that's basically the leg and the arm here. And you can just shift select that other joint. And we're going to go under the rigging menu. Uh, we're going to go to skeleton, mirror joints, option box. And I'm going to reset the settings here just to uh, make sure everything's fresh. And this one will mirror across the YZ axis. So if this is when you're doing this for real, it's, it, if you've got it set so that she's uh, he or she is facing the the camera, then it'll probably be YZ. If you don't get the results you expect, try the other axes and see what happens. But oh, eh, it wants me to do one at a time. Okay, whoosh. All right, so we'll do that. And the arm, like we said before, is at a different angle, so I'm just going to use the rotate tool. That'll be good. So we'll go ahead and select the leg now and go to skeleton mirror. We can just use the same settings again so I don't even need to go to the option box. And now we are going to have uh, duplicates of those joints and they're going to be in the right place but the uh, software does not know to rename them. So now I've got right hip one instead of left hip and so on down the line. I don't want right knee, right ankle. I want left knee, left ankle. The other thing that's really important when setting up one of these rigs is a good understanding of the parent-child relationship between um, nodes in Maya in general and between your joints in specific. So the next thing that we need to do is skin it, and in order to do that we have to select all of the geometry that we want to skin and all of the bones that we want to skin it to in that order. And that's going to be difficult visually, and it's going to be kind of difficult, I mean it's not really that bad. I mean. So it's not that difficult in, in the outliner, but the, the 3D textures are kind of in the way. So I wanted to show you some, uh, some other ways to select things and isolate selections, and I thought this was a good opportunity to do it. So um, in order to isolate things, you can go under the Show panel, and there's isolations, and then there's what you're showing. Um, so I'm going to put... I'm going to put it to show none, and everything will disappear. It's all still there, but um, I'm not showing it. So 
And I'm going to go back to the show menu again and I'm going to say show polygons. And now all I have to do is draw a big marquee around the whole thing and it selects all the geometry. And I can go back to show joints and I can shift select the root joint. Um, and yes, you can do that in the outliner as well, but seemed like a good opportunity to show that um, that you can isolate things in that way. It's it's important to use that when your scenes start getting more complex. Um, and we can bring all those back now. Show all to bring everything else back. So select all the geometry that's going to be skinned, and then the root joint that you're going to skin it to and go to the skin menu and click bind skin and that will create a relationship now between the skeleton and the mesh so that it will actually pull the geometry along with it. Now we have not set any constraints on this so there's nothing preventing us from breaking her arm and putting her in severe pain except for just choosing not to do it. But it does flex the geometry pretty well as long as we don't destroy her. Just don't break this poor girl's legs. Um, Oh, I, I did the wrong thing with the, uh, ah, shoot, I did the, I did the neck wrong because I, I wanted to be able to bend the neck up and down without the shoulders coming with it. Okay, let's see here. So the clavicle has, I just want the, let's make this the clavicle. call it clavicle one because it doesn't want two nodes that are named the same thing and we're going to call this growth. So the right shoulder needs to be actually parented to the clavicle and not the throat. Um, so I can just move that in the outliner by middle click and dragging it up to clavicle and just boom quick and easy. Left shoulder same thing middle click right up to the clavicle, drop it on. And did I do that properly? Yes. Okay, so good opportunity through my mistake to show a little bit of rearranging of the of the bones and you can see that the of the joints and you can see that those bones now are no longer these two bones right here the clavicle, what you might call the clavicle bones, are no longer coming out of the neck. They're coming out of the rib cage. And again, this is just an illustration of the parent-child relationship. You don't actually draw bones. Maya draws them for you. Uh, so these bones after where it's top head, nose, and chin, you would never move or rotate these individually. You're going to get some crazy results. Um, you would just move the throat, you would just rotate the throat back and forth, um, you know, or side to side to get her to rotate her head. So um, I think that is mostly what I wanted to say on setting bones. And uh, we might get into constraints if we have time on Thursday, but I do want to talk about painting weights a little bit, and this this is um, pretty easy to learn, but it takes a long time to do. You'll notice, of course, some of these some of these joints move pretty well just right out of the box. We don't have to even mess with anything, but have you noticed that it's pulling geometry from places we don't want? like the knee is pulling 
this other um, this this other bit of geometry on the other leg over here. Can you see that? Oh, and the shoe a little bit too. And then the the throat is even a little more prominent. It's pulling the chest up. We don't want that. We don't want the this geometry moving because she's leaning her head back. So what happens when you make these rigs is the um, it gets this area of influence set on the geometry around it according to how far away it is. And um, it's an automatic thing and it's just gonna kind of draw a sphere around the um, around each joint and that's really how it decides what geometry is gonna be affected by that joint. So the wrist is a good example of something that it, it actually is affecting the hip just a little tiny bit but it's largely gonna do its own thing but then if you grab like one of the spine joints and have her lean over you might get some extra pull. That's not really too bad. If you grab the head, the throat joint you can really see where it pulls the chest out. Um, and that's just the default weights. They're going to be pulling geometry from a, just a generic sphere around that, that particular joint. So um, starting, I don't know, maybe with the throat might be a good place to start. I'm going to go to the paint weights. That's the wrong button. Which one's paint weights? Okay, this one. This is auto rig, and, or quick rig. And this might be something, I don't know much about this, but this might be something that's worth playing with. I don't know um, exactly what it does, except that it's, it's going to automate a lot of this stuff. Uh, but let's go to the paint weights here. should be seeing so we should be seeing white and and black on the character and I'm not quite sure why we're not blend shapes create lattice create cluster You are so irritating. Ugh. Shading is on. Skin. Paint skin weights option. Let's see if I'm just make sure that I got the options here set. Weight type skin weights. I'm a little 
dumped as to what I'm missing. I need to select the model. Okay, let's try. Skin, paint skin weights, option box, reset tool, go to the throat, and flood it black. I usually flood it black. Okay, yeah, so you got to select the model. Um, I was thinking you were, so, you were supposed to select the joints, but you actually you select the joints here. And um, then I'm going to, the value is the, the influence that, that that bone has on that part of the mesh. So um, this is all going to, I'm going to basically paint 100% weight on this up here. Everything, you know, from the neck up to the up to the top of the head here is what I'm going to paint. And this is just defining the white is the area of influence for that joint. Again, I've got the throat joint selected. So this is, it's real easy to get the idea on this tool, I think, but then you're going to just spend a lot of time just painting with it. And I, I should have my, uh, my eyeballs and my, that's, I don't think I have all my geometry selected. Okay, make sure you've got all your geometry selected. You need to have it all selected. And I am getting a little bit of white on the shoulder here that I'm going to have to clean up. Uh, you might want to know holding down the B key and then click dragging left and right will increase and decrease your brush size. And that's a useful um, shortcut to know for any brush in Maya. And it applies to Mudbox as well, I'm pretty sure. you got to get into the little nooks and crannies really, really f tightly and specifically. And um, feel free to take stuff out of your selection, too, it, it, so you can't paint on it. That can sometimes be helpful. I'm doing, I'm doing the quick, easy version right now, so... getting a little tricky trying to get back here without getting the uh, any on the shoulders but I'm gonna paint over that with black anyway so you know whatever my pit bull says hello If you can hear her, she wants to sing you the song of her people. Okay, so I think you probably whoa, I think you probably get the idea here. You do want to try to get everything as thoroughly as possible. And I am oh I didn't mean to do that. I am going to change the value now to zero and try to get some of the some of the stuff on the shoulders cleaned up here in the uh, this area so that it this is what determines 
its influence over the geometry, and I don't want it pulling on the shoulders when I move the, the throat joint. So um, that's not exactly perfect, but I do still see a few little black areas. I'm going to try to get these a little better. These brush tools respond well to a tablet, too, if you have one. They use all of the uh, pressure and rotation features and stuff that you might have. So. And the same is true of Mudbox. So um, let's just turn off the selection there, and I'll just test the clavicle. Okay, it's still pulling on the chest a little bit. Not quite sure why. Pro oh, I, yes, I am sure why. It's because these other these other joints are also pulling on the chest. So. I said this is a straightforward process but it, it takes some time so go back to paint weights with the option box open and I'll just go down the, the list now I'm gonna flood it with no influence That might be enough. That might be all I need to do. <laughs> and you can see where the uh, some of the geometry is missing, so you'd have to tweak that. But um, it is not pulling the chest out. And that's what paint weights does. Is it um, it affects it, it helps you determine what, what parts of the mesh the bones actually affect, how they deform. So you could also do the opposite. That might work better in this case, because I think what it is is there's stuff inside her head, um, which I could either isolate the, the selection, or I could do, I could do the same... Um, the, the, the same paint weights that I just did, but in reverse, and select the throat, flood the whole model with, um, other way around, flood the whole model with 100% influence. Let's get everything selected. So, but then we might run into the same problem down here if, uh, if there's also stuff inside that. And then go through and go through and paint the weights off all the rest of the model. That's an option too. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, I hope I got my point across because my uh, Maya just crashed. Cool. Thank you. Actually, I'll just reload it. Maya is, today's Maya is very forgiving with crashes, much more so than older versions. So maybe I'll just be able to recover where I was or close to it. No, no such luck.
<laughs> okay. back in the default scene. Luckily I have I have it saved from earlier, so so that's the good news. Um So, flooding crashes Maya sometimes. Okay. Good to know. A lot of times, um, your your crashed file will appear on a little window on on the left here when Maya boots back up. Uh, but I had no such luck this time, apparently. So, and actually. I should go look. There might be, in the autosave, there might be something I can use. So with the shoulder, I'm just going to do one more here and probably call it a day. Um, Y'all kind of get the point at this point, I think, but let's go ahead and remember to select all your geometry and we'll go to, switch me back to the modeling menu, you want the rigging menu set, go to skin, paint skin weights, and you pretty much always want the option box with this one. So, um, I'm going to go to right shoulder, and I'm going to flood it black and cross my fingers. Hopefully it won't grief me. I hope it doesn't, you, I guess with the way I, the way I do this, I, I guess if you're going to do it the way I like to do it, you're going to want to be saving pretty often because I, I almost always start every joint with a flood, with a flood black to remove all of its influence and then and then I, I paint the influence back on from scratch. So yeah, this uh, this model it looks like with all the uh, insidey bits that it has, the insidey bits, you're gonna probably need to use that isolate select to some degree while you're painting weights because it's gonna be difficult. Chances are it's gonna leave some some geometry behind when I flex this shoulder, um, like it did with the head. Clean up around the edges here. Take the influence off the. Off that. And right elbow. Maybe in this case, I'll I'll keep the the influence the way it is and just. 
paint the black onto uh, the coveralls here. That, I think that'll be good. Right wrist. I think there was a little tiny bit of influence on the wrist. It's barely visible. But, and right fingertip. Just make sure that's all. All that influence is gone. Just take a look here, and yeah, okay. So I, I did miss a little bit of it. Let's see how the shoulder looks. Hopefully better. Yeah, so I still missed a little bit of it. You can see where the coveralls are coming out a little bit. So let's uh, let's try to... I'm going to try to go back in and get the rest of that if I can. But it might it might require a um, some selection isolation. I think it's under the coveralls. I'm, that's my guess. Um, so I'm going to deselect the coveralls, which the modeler actually named shirt. But I'm going to deselect the coveralls, and <clears throat> then I'm going to go to Show, Isolate, Select, View Selected. And that will hide the coveralls. You could also use Control H to hide it, but because um, I think what's what it's pulling on is underneath. Yep, it's underneath that mesh too. Yep, that's one mesh. Okay, so let's show isolate select, take that off. That'll, that'll keep your stuff hidden until you take it off, so you want to turn that off when you're done. And we'll go back to make the selections again. Skin. Paint skin weights. the shirt. I'm just going to press control 1 to show selected this time. Yeah, it's going to be tricky to get in there because this is one mesh would have been helpful to have the shirt as a, as a separated mesh, but um, you can always select those um, those polygons and oh, thanks. <laughs> we want that at one percent opaque. Uh, one hundred percent opaque. One point zero. One point zero means one hundred percent. But uh, yeah, the um, the shirt is is kind of making this difficult. So um, you might have to fiddle with that if you were in this situation. Might be good to have the shirt separated from the mesh uh, if you're going to have it like this deep. Like if it just came out as like a lip, like right here, it would be fine. But the fact that it goes this deep all the way up to the armpit here, and there's this big cavity between the shirt and the torso is um, making this difficult. Right elbow, right wrist. 
wrist, right fingertip. Okay. So I think it's going to pull that little bit out again, but. because I think you get the idea here. Sometimes the hard brush helps those stubborn areas. It's a good idea. And those, uh, those white paintings are painting on vertices. So they're mostly going to be like when you're painting over like the face of a polygon, like like the inside part, you're not going to have that much effect, if any at all. It's it's mostly going to react when you hit a vertex. Um, so keep that in mind because it's it's the computer from the computer's perspective, it's just moving vertices around and then drawing the stuff in between it. So. So that's about it for today. I'm going to uh, post this on YouTube later and